I'll give you some context. I'm the principal of the Early Education and Family Wellness Centre in Wetaskiwin, which is part of Wetaskiwin Regional Public Schools system. And uh, we, we offer a play-based preschool experience to children with identified delays and disabilities, but also we have that mix of typically developing children um, peers who benefit from the program as well. Generally the children are in our program for two years and then they transition to their neighborhood kindergartens and then into their grade one program with their same age peers. The team of professionals who provide the services and supports at the Early Education Centre also work in the home with the families supporting them to become uh, stronger advocates and better understand the needs of their child. And then we also follow them into kindergarten to provide that uh, consistency of, um, of support. So, um, no one strategy makes a program, as we've all seen. There are many factors involved, and it's the way that everything fits together, hence the title, putting it all together, um, that makes the program be, be the best it can be. We've heard from many people today, and there are strong similarities with early education programs around Alberta. I believe that we all learn from each other and I'm happy to be able to share just some small part of that. And since time goes quickly apparently, I will move quickly. So I'm going to start with our philosophy and several years back um, we adopted a, a statement, believing, behaving, becoming. And I want to credit that to a gentleman named Lyle Lorenz that some of you may have encountered in your uh, leadership uh, training. Um, he was meaning it in the context of leadership and providing leadership, but we really embraced it because it spoke to us and we really do live it and believe it. So I'll just explain it a little bit more so that you understand kind of where our thought process was. We truly believe that all children can learn and our actions, the way that we behave in planning and implementing the learning environment, set the stage for children to behave as learners. So I'm not using behave in the context of be good. I'm using it in the context of act like a learner and involved learner in uh, creating their own experiences. Um, so there are learners with choice and opportunity to explore and interact with their peers. Our collaborative planning and our teamwork contribute to the children becoming successful leader, learners. Our philosophy also embraces the belief that inclusion is the norm. Inclusion has many multiple meanings, as several speakers have mentioned today, and it's important for every aspect of the child's life, not just where they're sitting in the classroom or which classroom they're sitting in. So we look at family inclusion. A lot of our families come to us and, and let us know that they have difficulty functioning as a family in the community. They can't go grocery shopping. Um, they're often excluded from family celebrations and dinners because their child doesn't know how to behave or they can't control their child. Um, so that's a big problem for them. They need to be part of all of those aspects of their life. School inclusion is the obvious one. In the classroom, on the playground, throughout the school day and school year. And social inclusion is a really big piece of the puzzle. That, that inclusion with their peers so that when they go play soccer in their community or when they meet up with friends at a swimming pool, that they're still considered to be part of that um, peer group. Uh, very quickly, I just identified a few areas of uh, research that we've sort of done some really good reading and uh, trying to understand. So in the areas of brain development, um, several people there, and of course I'm happy to add our speakers from today onto that list as well. Um, early learning strategies, we look back at, at some people uh, that I've listed there. Family engagement, Joyce Epstein is the guru in that, and that's certainly where we started, but that's not exclusive. There's lots of research on family engagement, and I think Barb covered a lot of that earlier, so that's very helpful as well. And then, of course, just good teaching strategies, and uh, that's something that's ongoing throughout. Our program offers many different options. Um, we have a full or part-time attendance choice. We offer a morning or an afternoon choice. Some of our families choose a home-based program, oftentimes for that first year when they're really, really not ready to let their two-and-a-half or three-year-old leave the nest. So we, we accommodate that. 
And that can look really different depending on where they live and depending on the family dynamic. Um, I should probably give you the context that our jurisdiction is very wide across the province. So we go all the way west to Alder Flats, which is Drayton Valley, Rocky Mountain House area, and we go east to Gwynn. So we have a lot of families that are fairly um, isolated in terms of what resources they can access easily. So home-based programming is often the only option, at least to get started. Um, we often do a blend of that center-based and home-based, so families that are kind of ready to let their little baby leave um, and uh, still kind of want to have that piece where they're at home as well. Or sometimes it's a medical reason. If there's a medically fragile child, they maybe can't attend the program as frequently as they'd like. We certainly don't want them to lose the opportunity to have that programming. Of course, family-oriented program visits are part of what we do, but it's up to the family to decide how many and how frequently and what those look like. And we offer our outreach supports in the kindergarten. Typically in a kindergarten class, there might be one, two, or three POF children, sometimes as many as nine. Um, so it looks a little bit different than it does in a center-based program where the majority of the children are there with delays and disabilities. But what we try to do is put those strategies and supports in place, just as many of you have already said, that, that are good for all kids. And of course, even more importantly, we offer flexibility of choice and uh, we still offer consistency as well because it's that mix of uh, a structure but with choice and flexibility within the structure. <clears throat> Our program has been constantly evolving throughout the year as children grow and develop, but even year to year, because every year it's a new group of families, a new group of children with new challenges, so we can't have one set uh, program. It needs to adjust and bend for the needs of that, that group. We get our input from many disciplines and consultants, but our support teams of speech and language, occupational therapy, physical therapy, psychology, behavior consultant, whatever mix of people we have, they're all part of that team. And oftentimes, if you're looking into our classroom, you would be very hard pressed to identify who's the teacher and do you have any teaching assistants in this room because I can't figure out who's who, which we think is a good thing. Um, we are always free to try something new Take a risk, adjust, expand, change, whatever needs to happen. The structure of the program remains consistent with the philosophy, but it can look very different day to day and year to year. Believing is about relationship building. So we believe all children can learn, but we need to begin where the family is. And we need to Consider that each family is unique and has different needs. We listen and we try to understand those needs right from the beginning. That's the foundation for our future relationship. Based on that, we focus on what we can offer. We don't say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. We talk about, okay, we've heard what your struggles are and what your challenges are. Here's what we can do, and that's our starting place. Knowing that they have a choice is often very reassuring to families because they feel that they still have some control and, they're, and then we're not doing something to them or to their child, we're doing things with them. Families are a very important part of our team as all of you have also identified they're important to your teams. We work together and plan for success and our common desire, common desire is to do what's best for the child. Another part of believing is team building. Building the team is more than hiring qualified people to fill a specific role. Our foundational principles of the program are clearly communicated right from the start, and it's about attracting and choosing people who are the right fit. They share that same philosophy, but they also contribute something different. Each person on the team, regardless of their role and responsibility, provides something unique to that team. And we all learn from each other, during our collaborative time, during family conferences, as well as working together side by side in the classroom. The team becomes stronger because of this. <clears throat> we believe that building routines is part of helping those children behave as learners. All, the ch all children do better when the with their routine is structured and predictable. We know this. The goal is to have interventions happen in the most natural environment. 
and when it makes sense to provide teaching or a practice of a skill outside of the classroom, that could be an option as well. Sometimes one child with one adult, sometimes an adult with a child and a play partner, or sometimes in smaller groups with one or two adults and eight or nine children. We're looking at the kindergarten program statement as the foundation that we're working towards building. We break down the skills and the learner outcomes and we help the children become ready to learn when they get to formal school, which in our world is grade one. We focus on the foundational skills the child will need to be successful both in kindergarten and beyond. Another part of behaving is the collaborative time. Um, so we have consistent and frequent collaboration of all our team members, including parents, as a priority. This allows our team to focus on strategies that work, but always looking to challenge the child to master new skills. The learning activities as well as the routines of the day are deliberate and intentional, and all members of the team know this and look for those opportunities within the routines and throughout the day to introduce new skills and practice emerging skills. Our record keeping of progress is ongoing and frequent and everyone contributes. There's lots of eyes and ears that are observing and our collaborative time allows us to share the different views of every child and reflect on what the next goal should be. Transitional planning is a very important part of becoming successful as a, as a learner. But we believe that transition is not an end result. We begin right away because the child transitions from their home environment into the choice of their program. Throughout the year, families and team members review together what the next step should be, and adjustments can be made as necessary. Options for that next step, next transition, are provided, and the appropriate people are included. So when we're transitioning a child into a new kindergarten program, the receiving teacher is invited to attend that, um, that meeting to discuss where the child was, where they are now, and where they're going. <clears throat> Families often are struggling with a new diagnosis or they just don't know how to manage the challenging behaviors that some of their children have. We ask families what they've already tried and we offer to model new strategies and help them to evaluate whether or not those new strategies work. Building the family's confidence and knowledge strengthens their family life as well as prepares them to continue to advocate to have their child's needs met in other activities and grades. Our program offers many other experiences, just as many of you have shared today. We uh, do the Seeds of Empathy program where we bring in babies, real live babies, and uh, watch them grow throughout the year. Our kids love it, and we see real carryover into the home. We're having a little mini baby boom in our program, and it seems like every mom is coming in pregnant and leaving with a new baby, so it's been very helpful, I think, for them as well. Um, we offer a variety of cultural experiences. We bring visitors into the program, have special events, and near the end of the year, field trips. We also focus on the Triple P Parenting Program and work specifically with some, ch some families who are asking for that uh, specific support in their home. And we offer other parent workshops that are based on the uh, needs that parents have identified. We see a lot of commonality. If one person's having trouble with toileting, um, or eating, we probably have eight or ten families that are struggling with that as well. Parents and guardians are offered multiple experiences to enhance their knowledge and skills and this makes them stronger advocates for their child. <clears throat> Evidence of success is kind of nebulous and we've struggled with it a lot. I've uh, accessed uh, Barb's uh, survey to try and help us uh, get some clear data on it but generally speaking we work with a lot of anecdotal kinds of records and people giving us comments. Um, we've seen an increase in our enrollment year to year. We're in year 10 now and we're up to 60 children. We started and we had barely 20 so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it means there's lots of kids that we're identifying but I think it's an awareness in the community that there's help and programming available so we're identifying these kids before they get into the school system which is a benefit to everyone. Um, our community placements are limited to match the ratio that Alberta Education is looking for and we actually have a wait list as early as December of the current school year for the next year. People very anxious to get their child in. 
Um, we get a lot of referrals from our community partners. They see that we're doing good things for kids and the parents are expressing um, their excitement with, uh, with uh, receiving the support. And the parent feedback is very good. I just wanted to share in closing a, a couple of statements. I asked our staff um, when I knew I was doing this, I said, so tell me what is the best feature of our program because I can look at it, but everybody has a different, a different view. And these are some statements. One of our teaching assistants made the statement that having a team effort makes us stronger 17 times over. And I heard that earlier today, that we learn from each other. So I, not, I am not a speech and language pathologist, but when you sit and play beside a speech and language pathologist as they're playing with children, you pick up a few things. So then you're better able to be more responsive to a child's needs in that area. Um, our speech and language pathologist made a really great statement. Each student here has a long line of people who've got their back. And it's that sort of um, feeling that these are our kids, our, as a collective, and uh, we all want them to succeed and we're there to help support them to do that. And our occupational therapist made the statement about we're good at thinking outside the box, but even more importantly, we're, bet we're good at being flexible when the child can't be. And that's important to know because the child can't fit himself into what we expect, but we can certainly adjust our expectations and our strategies to help. The parent feedback is even more important to us, and I could have probably done about 10 slides easily, but I didn't. Um, one mom this uh, just before Christmas made the statement that the grandparents came to visit and they couldn't believe the difference in the child just in terms of understanding the speech and language and the fact that he no longer screamed at the top of his lungs and stood on top of the table when it was meal time. So those were exciting changes that they observed in a very sh what they perceived to be a very short time. Um, we have a parent networking opportunity for specifically for parents whose children have been diagnosed with autism because we've had a real increase in that in our community. And it was actually parents who used to be on our program came to us and said, can you facilitate this? We want it to be a parent-led group, but can you give us a space and can you just help us sort of come together? And we gladly did that. And the alumni parent, Ken, made a statement at about the third or fourth month that they met to another group of new parents that you'll never feel more loved than you do here. So families come to us and recognize that we're there for them and we're supporting them and we truly do love them and their children. <clears throat> and then the one that really gets to me is when a mom was so excited because her little girl came home with a birthday invitation. And it was the very first time she had ever been invited to a birthday party, party including family birthday parties. And the fact that the, the mom of this birthday child said, oh yeah, for sure, we want her to come. It just, it broke my heart and she was so, so excited about it. So in closing, um, I just wanted to share the recipe for success. And I guess the key point is that inclusion is a process of putting together all the right pieces for the program, the family, and most importantly, the child. The recipe for success is not a consistent one. We're constantly adjusting, adding, deleting ingredients, and then reviewing the results and hope it tastes good. One of the key components is the collaboration time to review and revise the program and interventions for each child. While there's structure and predictability framing the program, there's room for individual choice and flexibility to meet the needs of each child and family as those needs change. To be responsive to those needs, we need to continually evolve. Another key component is building a relationship of respect and trust with each family and a belief that all children can learn, and having that philosophy that inclusion is the norm provides that solid foundation for the relationship. Looking at new and current research, working together as a team, taking chances to try new strategies are all part of what we do in our practice. But inclusion is a mindset. It's a philosophy and it, it's that, it is that belief that drives us to behave in ways which ensure that our children become the very best they can be. Thank you for the opportunity to share our ideas about best practices around inclusion in the early years in our program, in our community. And I want to thank all of the presenters today because, and the participants for the opportunity to, to share and discuss the richness of programming that's happening here in Alberta. We have actually had families register with us from as far away as Ontario and British Columbia and Saskatchewan 
and a few other spread out places. And they purposely moved to Alberta because they had heard of the good things that are happening for kids in inclusion. Um, I think that's a real bonus to us, and I feel very, very fortunate to be one very small part of that. Thank you. <laughs>